Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. In 1954, there was war in Indochina. Another little war, but it was a real war. Fortunately, this war did not spread into a worldwide conflagration. More recently, the threat of war has shifted to Formosa. How these threatening sparks will be quenched, we do not know. But with our anxious eyes on the east, we must never forget our danger in the west. Here our protection is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. While our attention has been focused on the east, what has NATO been doing in the west? NATO's banner flies proudly. Since the foundation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the communists have gained not one foot of new territory in Europe. NATO was founded April 4, 1949, by 12 nations of widely different languages and customs. During its six years, NATO has well proved its power for peace. It is a calm, studious approach to peace. It is a new approach. Never before in history have Europe's rival nations formed such a working alliance. Many different uniforms from many different homelands. NATO land is composed of 14 different nations with a combined army seven million strong. NATO's buildup is almost done. This achievement required vast effort last year, a succession of training exercises conducted throughout Europe. This is a pictorial report on the NATO maneuvers of 1954. The first of these extensive training periods was exercise Metflix Able from 28 March to 1 April. This exercise was held in the Mediterranean Sea near Gibraltar, pillar of Hercules, gateway to the Mediterranean. British men of war stand off Gibraltar's thousand foot peak. The commanders of the exercise meet aboard the flagship Glasgow with Admiral Lewis Mountbatten, commander in chief of Allied Forces Mediterranean. Admiral Mountbatten's job is guarding the one million square miles of the blue Mediterranean Sea. It was once called the Roman Sea. Today, the Mediterranean might be called the NATO Sea. The British home fleet sets out for the maneuver area. The United States Sixth Fleet is also part of these forces. British aircraft prepare for a support mission. Propeller-driven Avengers and Sky Raiders combine with jet attackers and Seahawks. On the carrier Essex, British pilots are briefed on today's sorties. During this exercise, they will practice various missions, offensive, defensive, reconnaissance. In World War II, the prime mission in the Mediterranean theater was to defend Gibraltar and the Suez Canal. Now, in addition, these men protect the fabulous oil fields of the Near East. Once Phoenician galley ships measured the Mediterranean Sea in terms of weeks to a jet it is minutes. These floating bases are part of an air defense ring that encircles Western Europe. A typical scene throughout the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. Today, the NATO buildup has shifted its emphasis from numerical strength to combat readiness. Carrier-based helicopters hover nearby for quick rescue work in case of accident. A few years ago, war was thought inevitable. Its threat has receded with each day of NATO training. This five-day exercise comes in early spring after Europe's winter storms. The Sirocco, the warm Mediterranean wind, brings perfect flying weather. NATO was originally built on supplies from the Marshall Plan. Now there is a continuous 3,000-mile supply line from America across the Atlantic to Europe. The cost, of course, is tremendous. 
Already NATO has cost as much as the Marshall Plan. The total is about $17 billion to date. It will continue to cost about $4 billion per year. The United States carries most of this financial burden. The price of peace. The price of establishing American defense lines 3,000 miles away from American soil. The birds come home to roost. This exercise has been observed by French and Italian representatives. On every ship, you find men from several nations united in one belief that a show of strength is the only road to peace. Firefighters wait as the planes come in. Carrier landings, although well developed in World War II, still have an element of risk. One British pilot brings in a crippled plane. His landing gear fails to operate. He comes in for a belly landing on his empty gas tank. British flying skills saves the pilot and the plane. Only four minutes after the landing, the plane is hauled off the busy flight deck and carried to the repair shop below. NATO's Mediterranean fleet ranges from southern Europe to North Africa and the Near East. Its next maneuver was in the summer of last year. It was called Exercise Metflix Baker from 15 to 24 July. NATO's southern fleet teamed with land forces in a huge exercise that began at Malta, GC. GC means George Cross, a medal given by King George IV for Malta's valiant stand during World War II. Malta has been a British fortress since 1814. Today, Malta is a NATO fortress. The ships of six nations gather in Sliema Bay. During World War II, Malta had to be supplied by submarine. NATO stands to prevent that happening again. This is a combined operation spanning the Mediterranean to North Africa. Ella Dam, North Africa, is a Royal Air Force base. Shackleton bombers of the RAF will support landings by the Royal Marines at Mileha Bay. This is a beach on the northeast coast of Malta, south of Sicily. The first waves establish a beachhead and move inland. Under simulated artillery fire, wave after wave comes in. St. Paul, a man of peace, once visited Malta. St. Paul might be surprised at what is happening on Malta today, but he probably would agree with its peaceful purpose. Admiral Mountbatten at headquarters. Malta is NATO's headquarters in the Mediterranean. Representatives from the six allied nations go on an inspection tour. There's little evidence of Malta's World War II damage, but in 1942, hardly a building was left standing. Later, the Italian fleet surrendered here. Now Italy is here as an ally. Action speed tactical teaching. British terminology for an officer's school. Here, combat problems are presented to naval officers in sessions throughout the year. On the British ship Surprise, Admiral Mountbatten and members of the NATO Council watch a demonstration of ship-to-ship -ship transportation. A commander slides over to his own ship by Breach's Buoy. A more up-to-date lift is by helicopter. As in the American Army and Navy, the helicopter has become a kind of all-purpose sky jeep. NATO's present emphasis is on massing the very latest equipment and establishing standards of use. Said President Eisenhower recently, 
NATO is a working partnership among the Atlantic peoples. It is a unity of free men in an age of peril. Secretary of State Dulles calls NATO an organization for closer cooperation in political and economic affairs. NATO's long-term aim is an enduring association capable of protecting the safety and improving the well-being of free nations. NATO is more than just a military organization. Cooperation in military affairs will lead to closer association and understanding. Moving farther east, NATO's fall training began with Exercise Keystone from 1 to 5 September. This was to be the year's largest maneuver. It was planned at Izmir, Turkey. This is the headquarters of Allied Forces Southern Europe. Turkey, with Greece, joined NATO in 1952. This training period follows Exercise Longstep, the first Turkish maneuver. A Turkish officer explains the situation map to American General Paul Kendall and American Admiral William Fechteler. Other observers are representatives of Turkey, Britain, Greece, Italy, and France. The big maneuver begins in Greece. Near Cordelia, in northern Greece, near the Achilles Line, the Greek First Army opens a counterattack. Before NATO, Greece and Turkey had been seriously threatened by Soviet efforts to halt their recovery from World War II. At Alepsis Air Base near Athens, Greek pilots receive instruction. Greece now has five NATO air bases. Many of these pilots receive their training as aviation cadets in U.S. Air Force schools in Arizona. The Greek Air Force is composed primarily of American-built F-84 Thunder Jets and F-86 Sabre Jets. They are part of NATO's 28th Tactical Air Force. NATO began with a few outdated World War II planes. Now it counts its jets in thousands. Under the Truman Doctrine, Greece received $300 million in military and economic aid. This was the beginning of a rebirth for this nation that ages ago gave the world its first ideas of freedom and government. Greece has furnished five infantry divisions to NATO. Exercise Keystone features them in a river crossing. This is the Strumon River. Its banks are mined with dummies for training. Greek infantry loads up to head for the west bank of the Strumon. Greece is a land of rivers and close-linked islands. The terrain requires this type of training. The infantry takes the west bank. Now positions must be established on the high points to protect the engineers who will build bridges. It must be remembered that Greece was occupied by the Nazis. These soldiers know what it means to be unprepared. This maneuver is taking place about 10 miles from Athens, which saw Nazi soldiers quartered in every home. Such experience gives these Greek soldiers a decided earnestness. Ammunition and supplies quickly follow the river crossing. The 706th Combat Engineer Battalion of the Greek Army, a ponton bridge will be constructed across the river. It is noticeable that most of NATO's techniques follow those of the American Army. This is because American equipment is used primarily. NATO began with 14 thin, poorly equipped divisions in 1949. Today, NATO boasts twice as many each well-trained and equipped. Another 25 divisions are planned as a reserve.
This great maneuver is only the first phase of exercise keystone. It is typical of NATO exercises that coordinated training is carried out simultaneously at many different locations, often separated by hundreds of miles. The second phase of exercise keystone is held in West Turkey. Training continues here on Pagas Hill overlooking the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey. This will be another amphibious maneuver, this time combining American and Turkish troops. The excellent harbor of Izmir furnishes the rendezvous point for landing craft. Under American, Turkish, and Italian commanders, the force hits Dikili Beach. Assault vehicles quickly follow. These are units of the Turkish First Army. Turkey, like Greece, suffered communist political infiltration until Marshall Plan and NATO aid turned back the Reds in the Near East. An F-84 jet squadron supports the amphibious exercise. There are nine NATO air bases in Turkey. For NATO's commanders, this training means constant travel throughout Europe. The Turkish army consists of 12 divisions. Turkey is an ancient nation, 900 years old. It is a young democracy of only 10 years. Turkish troops maintain their ancient tradition as tough, terrible enemies. Their death before surrender heroism won many citations when they fought as a member of the United Nations in Korea. The Turks are formidable fighters who take pride in closing with the enemy man to man. Shortly after exercise Keystone, maneuvers began in the north with exercise Indian summer from 22 to 26 September. This was held in the U.S. zone of Germany. General Alfred M. Grunther, NATO commander. With the failure of EDC, the European defense community, it is not yet known just what role Germany will eventually play in NATO. But this land is certain to become an important part of any European defense. Participating here are the 1st French Armored Division, the U.S. 1st and 4th Infantry Divisions, and the 2nd Cavalry Regiment. This is a gigantic land maneuver under the coordination of the 5th Corps, U.S. 7th Army. It has many training purposes, but an additional purpose could be to display NATO's might before the Communists. This exercise is divided into two opposing forces, called Black and Green. Black's mission is to attack with a stronger force and destroy Green. Green's mission is to delay Black's advance and, after reinforcement by an armored division, repel Black from the conquered territory. This is a huge military game. It is presumed that both black and green will employ atomic weapons. It is the announced plan of NATO to use atomic weapons in the event of war. It is no longer a theory that such weapons may be used. It is assumed that they will be used. In this exercise, both sides have the American-built 280 millimeter atomic cannon. NATO has staged many of these combined maneuvers since 1951. They have been held in every NATO country and in the western zone of Austria. This is the first exercise of such proportions held in West Germany. By now, tactics and procedures are fairly well standardized. Even the ammunition of every NATO nation is approaching standardization.
The United States has contributed five divisions to NATO. An average NATO division has about 15,000 men. There is a new word that will be heard in Europe for a long time to come. It is SACUR. It stands for Supreme Allied Command Europe. During the same period as this maneuver in Germany, NATO staged another exercise in Norway. Exercise Polar Mist was a two-week session from 17 to 30 September. A special phase was called the Blattend Maneuver, held in a very rugged terrain. This was carried out in the birch forests of northern Norway. This is refresher training for Norway's single NATO division. It is the northern part of an overall Scandinavian maneuver called Morning Mist. Surprisingly, the temperature here is relatively warm. Norway has a mild, humid climate due to North Atlantic currents. In NATO, Norway is working closely with Denmark to guard these northern mountains. As Norway's maneuver neared its close, Denmark began Exercise Skandek Mist from 25 to 30 September. This was also a phase of the overall northern exercise, Morning Mist. This training is being conducted by all Danish military services, as well as civil defense organizations, home guards, and the Army Reserve Corps. These units have been divided into opposing forces called Orange and Blue. This is the territory of Jutland. 60 miles west of here, the Germans and the British fought the great naval battle of World War I. Almost 40 years have passed, and we are still trying to prevent war. Perhaps NATO can succeed. Another maneuver of interest last year was called Exercise Battle Royal. It ran from 22 to 28 September in the British zone of Germany. British officers arrive from London. Britain's Bomber Command, of course, is part of NATO's strategic air defense. NATO has a large civilian secretariat. General Grunther arrives to get an air view of the maneuvers from a helicopter. General Grunther had long experience as a deputy under Generals Eisenhower and Ridgway, who preceded him as NATO commanders. A large tent camp has been prepared. Many umpires and evaluators are required in these big war games. This one will see six divisions and brigade groups and the second tactical air force. Civilians handle much of the logistical problem. Northland force will oppose Southland force here. The Northland force consists of a Netherlands Corps, the 4th Dutch Infantry Division and the 6th British Armored Division. In its first years, NATO's necessary emphasis on high-level planning did not neglect its lower echelons. From its top generals down to the privates, NATO is a smooth team, and each little group knows its job well. The Southland Force consists of a Belgian Infantry and Armoured Division, a Canadian Infantry Brigade, and a British Parachute Brigade. On the command to attack, a tank takes off like a woolly mammoth. The NATO Treaty reaffirms adherence to the Charter of the United Nations. Although NATO is a separate organization, it stands for the same principles. Peace for children standing beside the road, watching the guns go by. Peace through the power to enforce peace. NATO has 5,000 tactical aircraft from 160 bases. In the air and on the ground, NATO has achieved a formidable striking force. Behind these conventional guns, atomic weapons and guided missiles are stockpiled. Behind all this lies a vast communications and supply system.
From Iceland to Iraq, millions of men are training. It is to prevent one thing, communist aggression in Europe. General Grunther says along a 4,000 mile perimeter, NATO has erected a shield. This is the most expensive international project ever attempted in peacetime. But if Europe's ancient rivalries and suspicions can be changed to cooperation and trust, NATO will be worth the cost. The atomic cannon has never been fired in Europe. What you will see here is a simulated atomic explosion. But the atomic cannon can be fired in Europe. The guns are ready, the men are ready. This is the U.S. Army's largest field artillery weapon. It weighs 85 tons, but it can go anywhere artillery goes. It is manned like any other artillery piece. Today, it is thoroughly integrated in NATO's defense system. Should the Soviets attack any one of NATO's 14 nations, atomic guns will fire. NATO is building for the possibility of war. But NATO lives in the hope of peace, that these storm clouds will never rise in the western sky. It is an infinite effort. It will continue for unforeseeable years ahead. Gradually, NATO is molding a mass of soldiers from many different nations into a single western force. It is the first time this has ever been accomplished in peace. And that in itself gives America a wonderful hope. NATO is more than a military organization. It may help unite the diverse nations of Europe in permanent peace. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us next week for another look at your army in action on The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. You too can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.